Childhood friend? Childhood friend, yes. What was he like as a kid? More or less what he's like right now. Uh, first time I met Stephen, uh, he told me he was an artist. He, this was 10th grade. He didn't say, I want to be an artist. I'm thinking of me. He said he's an artist. And he started talking to me about Picasso, which was not the typical 10th grade conversation. The fruits of Stephen Robbins' decades-long career in sculpture are on view at Philadelphia's Rosenfeld Gallery. While Steve has explored a variety of different styles and media, the beauty and craftsmanship of his work remains consistent. Well, uh, my name is Stephen Robin, and I'm a sculptor, and uh, I'm having this retrospective here at Richard Rosenfeld. I'm very pleased to, uh, to be here and to show all this work, 30 years of work. It starts in the early 80s, right in this room. This piece I'm standing in front of is called Scroll. Uh, the title emphasizes the architectural ornamental feature of it. And then it also has Puti, which are three little angels, which are also self-portraits. They're me. In this piece in particular, there's a very high, very low relief put together. And uh, that was done on purpose. I studied at Fleischer Art Memorial since I was maybe uh, 10 years old and uh, got into sculpture very early on. For college, I went to Tyler and then graduate school at Cranbrook Academy of Art in Michigan. Came back to Philadelphia 10 years later. It never was a, a choice to be an artist. I always did it and that's all I ever thought about <laughs> doing. I know some people it's a choice later in life, but it never was for me. Did you uh, start out as a figurative sculptor? Oh, definitely. I started out that way. Later I was doing abstraction before these pieces, I was doing some abstraction. In 1980, early 80s, I started to do these. And I consider it my first mature work from, from this point on. When Richard offered me the retrospective, that's why I wanted to start at this point, not earlier, but right here. You're the model? No. Oh, I'm the daughter of the model, yes. Yeah. Oh, I know, it's a Linda Lind pieces, yeah. So I, I hate to ask this, but was your was your mother a hermaphrodite? No, 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 not that piece. No. Not that piece. <laughs> One of those rare cases where her mother is her father? No. no okay, no, okay. No, 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 thank you. Okay. They used to talk about psychological complexes and I've noticed that a lot of your sculptures you have a tiny little guy with a big strapping woman what what is the psychological meaning of that <laughs> well the woman is my first girlfriend it was done many years later but obviously I was still hooked somehow and uh, still am to some extent <laughs> he's a Puto, and she's kind of an angel. She has wings, and the, the piece is called Tondo, and that's an Italian term for a circular piece. Michelangelo, he did a, a Tondo, uh, Della Robbia did, and uh, comes from the Renaissance. It's a Renaissance term for a round ornament of some kind, big or small. I see that there's a lot of references to early Renaissance work, but you have quite the sense of humor. So obviously, that must be important to you, right? It, it is. I can't help it. <laughs> it's not consciously humor. It, it's just there. It's just, I, that's just what I do. I have lots of references to many things in everything that I do. Everything, including the public commissions, especially the public commissions. 
But these early pieces have a lot of personal imagery as well as referencing traditions of architectural ornament. So there's big references, small references, everything. There's a range of materials. There are several bronzes. One is gold leafed. This piece is uh, ultra cal, which is a hard kind of uh, gypsum, plaster-like cement. The piece above is uh, hydro cal, which is a hard plaster. The woman on clouds looks like plaster, but it's really uh, resin that's uh, painted to look like plaster. The white piece is white cement. The gray piece is gray cement, and the black piece is cast iron. The next room is the grills, and they're all cast iron. The one against the desk there was inspired by the cast iron cellar grates or grills that were everywhere in Philadelphia in the early days, and a lot of them have been stolen now. But I remember seeing a lot of them, and they were inspired by that as part of my interest in architectural ornamentation. They became non-floral and abstract and had this void in the center. How about the mass of uh, floral three-dimensional reliefs? They're called ground cover and they're resin with uh, graphite paint on them because of the tremendous amount of surface area that makes them heavy. I was after something loose, so I didn't refine them in plaster like everything else in the gallery is, is refined in plaster. But in that case, I just moved the clay with very crude pieces of wood, just a block of wood, and I left it. They were cast in uh, resin. But I wanted that look of uh, just the freshness of the clay moved and just left the way it was. With the deep, very deep areas of mystery. <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking before I started the pieces. Do you teach? No. I taught two years out of graduate school. I've always worked the big commissions with assistants, and it occurred to me years later that I was teaching because I was uh, helping young people uh, who were assisting me, and uh, made, they made it clear that I was teaching them. Did they go on to become sculptors as well, some of them? Yeah, some of them. Some of them. One is an architect now. He went to Yale for architecture. He's doing very well. Some of them went on to do very much their own thing and do very well. Where do you have your commissions? Two in Philadelphia, but mostly elsewhere. The, the most important by far is at the Reagan Building in Washington, right on the Federal Triangle. Uh, Federal Triangle Flowers, it's called, and that's uh, it's prominently on my website. And what was that like? Well, uh, the federal government commissions, I've done three, and they're great because they just hire you to do your work, and it, uh, you're not competing. The, the, the entire competition is internal. They think about different people, many people, and they decide on one and they give you the commission and of course you have to present all different phases and uh, jump through hoops and be approved at many stages but uh, it's yours to mess up. Have you ever messed up? <laughs> the, the last one that I recently I did not get and the judges were allowed to vote. I had to please the judges on this federal courthouse and there's no way to please federal judges. And if, if that had been the case with the other federal courthouses I did, I would not have gotten those either. Because federal judges want you to do what they want you to do. 
And the southern ones want you to put the Ten Commandments up. <laughs> All right, well, hey, thank you very much, Steve. Okay, thank you. Did you know that the artist has still is carrying a torch for your mother? Yes, yes. <laughs> Secretly, yes. And what's her opinion of him? I like him, but I like my dad a whole lot, too. So. Oh, 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 there you go. Okay. Oh, very sorry, Mr. Coble. I, I really am not trying to screw up your no, marriage. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs>